Hey. Ah! Oh, hey, Dylan. You really should stop making those Final Cut Pro mistakes. I know, but I don't know how to. Good thing we made this super helpful tips video. Agreed. Enough cringe, more tutorial. <laughs> The first mistake you might be making is using your sweet, valuable time every time you edit to drag in certain overlays, graphics, or stock video clips every time you want to include them in a project. If you have a bunch of media that you consistently use in your videos, this process of hopping out of FCP and dragging in the media you want to be included can be annoying. Some of you may even have specific libraries set up that you use to access these overlays. Instead, drag all that type of media into the Apple TV app. Then when you close out of FCP and hop back in and you open your library's browser, you head to this tab and click Apple TV. You'll have all of your overlays, graphics, etc. neat and ready to be previewed and ready to be used every time you edit. The second mistake you might be making in Final Cut Pro is choosing to remove effects rather than choosing to remove attributes. All of these clips have the specific color grade and let's say I want to remove that color grade from all those shots. Well frequently I will see that people will select all of the shots then they'll go up to edit and select remove effects or they would do option command x. Now if you do that watch my timeline you'll notice that all of the retiming effects has been removed as well as any extra effects I might have applied. So in this example I applied a prism effect to this shot and that is no longer there. Rather than selecting remove effects, we'll select all of these shots, we'll go up to edit, and we can select remove attributes, which can be done with shift command X. That will bring up this dialog window. In this dialog window, we can select the specific effects that we want to remove. So in this example, we want to just remove the color wheels effect. Now I could go in and click the checkbox next to each of these that I want to keep, but a better way is to push option and then click on the checkbox. And now all of the other checkboxes will be unchecked. From there, we can see that the color wheels is selected for removal and we can push remove. So now all of these shots have those color wheels removed, but you'll notice on the shot with the tree, we still have that prism effect and we have all of the retiming effects that we applied onto these clips. The third mistake you might be making is not utilizing snapshots. So let me ask you this. What happens when you get to a point in your project where some big changes are about to be made and you have no idea if you'll end up liking it later on. Well, you can duplicate the project so you can edit the new changes in one of those projects, but the issue is that once you edit a multi-cam clip or a compound clip, those changes will be made to both projects. A duplicated project is tied to the original project in that way. Instead, take a snapshot of your project by right-clicking and hitting Snapshot Project and it essentially freezes how your project looks at that moment. If you make changes to any compound or multicam clips, it will not affect the compound or multicam clips in the snapshot. It'll even tell you the time and date of the freezing. If down the road you decide, damn, these changes that I've made look horrible. I wish that I had that old version. Just revert to the snapshot that you created at the right date and time, and you'll have everything exactly how it was. This is really great for making what are essentially drafts. So if you complete a rough edit, take a snapshot. If you complete color grading, snapshot. Sound design, snapshot. That way you have easily accessible references of how your project developed. Going in tandem with the snapshots tip from Dylan, frequently I need to make duplicates of a compound clip on my timeline. So I'll go ahead and create a compound clip here, push option, click and drag to duplicate it. Now, if you've ever worked with a compound clip, you might be aware of the fact that if I jump inside of the compound clip and make any sort of changes, then back out, both compound clips are going to receive those changes. In a lot of circumstances, this is extremely helpful, but there are circumstances where you want to apply changes to one compound clip while not affecting the other compound clips. Oftentimes when people run into this situation, they'll select a clip, they'll push command shift and G to break apart that compound clip, then they'll apply their changes and then 
put it back inside of a compound clip. Rather than breaking apart the compound clip, instead select your clip, go on up to the clip menu and then select reference new parent clip. And what this has done is it has duplicated a new instance of the compound clip. So we can jump inside of this compound clip, make any changes that we might possibly need, back out and you'll notice that this compound clip is completely different from the previous compound clip. Something that absolutely will make you want to pull your hair out is when you realize you need to delete or adjust something on certain clips or other forms of media, but you don't know where that media is exactly in your large project. Don't make the mistake of scrubbing through the entire timeline and spending way too much time manually selecting those clips to delete effects or make specific adjustments to them. Instead, hop into your handy index. Type in the name of the media you want to adjust select that group, and that media will instantly be selected across the timeline, no matter where they are and no matter how large your project is. Then you can go to edit, remove attributes, or press the shortcut shift command X, and delete whatever effects you don't want anymore. And if you want to add a new effect to all of those selected clips, make it in one clip and press command C to copy. Make sure that clip is now deselected in the index, and hit shift command V to paste the effect to all of those other clips at once. Another mistake you might be making is when you go to adjust the volume, if you click on this white line, you might notice that it's extremely sensitive. A better way is if you click on this white line, then push command and click and drag, you'll notice that you have much finer tune adjustments over your volume. And one other tip I'd like to point out is you can change your volume in one decibel increments by pushing control plus or minus. The next mistake is thinking that you're out of luck if you get this out of media warning when you try to add a transition between clips. You may already know that the reason is because there's no more media left on the end of one of those clips or both. That's what this red edge represents. And the transition needs extra media for it to work. Now, you could trim the clip so then the transition will have media to work with, but maybe you want that part of the clip that you just trimmed to be visible in the project. So try this out instead. Select the clip and press the shortcut, Option, Command, and Up Arrow to lift that clip from the primary storyline. Head to the end of the clip and go a frame over, and hit the shortcut Shift-H to make a hold frame. This basically pauses your clip on that frame for however long you want. Then you just snap to the end of that gap clip and trim your clip by pressing Option and right bracket, or just trimming manually. Then blast that clip back down into the primary storyline by pressing Option, Command, and Down Arrow this time. Now when you drag the transition between the clips, you won't get the warning since the transition is using the media in the hold frame. The nice thing is, with the vast majority of transitions, you won't be able to tell that the clip was paused before. Another mistake you might be making in Final Cut Pro is not using audio rolls. I have all of these different sounds happening here, but it is extremely difficult for me to distinguish what is doing what. Now I could go in and read the names to kind of figure out, okay, this is a music track, these are sound effects, but a much better way to do this is to select all of your sound effects as you bring them onto your timeline, then right click, select assign audio rolls and apply effects. Then we could do the exact same thing with the music. I'll go to assign audio roles and select music. So now there's a very clear language of what is doing what on the timeline. But even further than that is if we click on the index, we can see that we have a slot for my dialogue, for my music and for my effects. One thing I can do is select show audio lanes and now this will separate out my dialogue, my music and my sound effects all into their own lanes. I could even say I want to put the music at the top, click and drag the music up above the dialogue, and now the music is much closer to where my video is on the timeline. So if I need to make musical edits to visuals on the timeline, this can be a great way to do that. We could even click on this icon to expand just the music effects so that the other roles are less distracting on the timeline. And finally, if you need to, you could go ahead and disable an entire audio role on your timeline so that you don't hear it during playback. 
Another mistake you could be making is constantly replaying a certain section of your video or audio so you can make adjustments to it. Pausing, going back to the position, playing again, and repeating this dance over and over while trying to adjust whatever you need to adjust is a huge time waster and it's annoying. Instead, just do this. Hit Command L to loop playback, and you'll be able to tell that playback is looped with this circle arrow icon around the play button. Then go to the middle of that video clip or audio clip and hit the shortcut Shift and question mark to play a few seconds before and a few seconds after the playhead position. And because we hit Command L to loop, it'll repeat until the end of time, or at least until your computer dies. This gives you the freedom to adjust your audio, even help you to choose the transition you want in between your clips. Have a transition in between your clips and make sure it is selected, and then just double click other transitions to immediately apply them to try out all the different transitions that you want to try out till you find the right one. The last mistake you might be making is immediately updating Final Cut Pro every time a new update drops. Before you update, I strongly recommend that you either have a time machine backup or if you're super risky like me and you don't bother with time machine backups, you can just go into your applications folder, right click on Final Cut Pro and then select compress. This is going to create a duplicate compressed version of Final Cut Pro that you can later expand should you need that old version. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Make sure you check out Dylan John's channel. We just did another video, which you may enjoy. It's stop doing these things in Final Cut Pro. If you hop over to my channel, you'll see what's going on with this thing. Why does it have a face print on it?